Welcome back, everybody. This is episode four of Pop Cannon. We're all here. We're ready to uh, dive into this. I'm Jordan. I'm Robert. I'm Andrew. And I'm Brian. Today's episode, we are talking all about the season two encompassing Westworld. Boy, what a season, huh, fellas? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean the last time that we, we left off, we talked about the first four episodes. The next one we were going to dive into was a Kana no Mai. That's correct. Oh, that's right. Oh, I yeah. forgot. Yep. And uh, one thing led to another. Yeah. And we wound up waiting until the season finale. And we're going to just kind of break everything down. What we liked, what we didn't like. Yeah. And so on and so forth. It was certainly uh, a divisive season, to say the least. I quite enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed the fuck out of it. Mm. Overall... <laughs> Overall, um, it was interesting. That's the way that I would describe the season. Oh yeah, no, um, a- a- absolutely compelling, definitely. Yeah, I think re- regar- I, regardless of of regardless of how you thought the quality of it, I think it was absolutely ambitious and it was absolutely compelling, no matter what. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. they they tried. Yeah, and, and we got a really cool sword fight. Which was awesome. Fuck yeah! And I, and I enjoyed the the sword fight. <laughs> By the way, uh, Con, uh, we uh, we had I think we had wondered we had wondered aloud on the last uh, uh, podcast. Uh, what does Akane no Mai mean? It means the dance of Akane. Yes. And then Maeve made everyone else dance like puppets. That was probably <laughs> one of the most gruesome deaths we've seen in the sh- in a show full of gruesome deaths. Yes. Yeah, this well, season's been nothing but gruesome deaths. Yeah, it's far gorier than season one. I'll, I'll say that. But but let's let's be honest. Death doesn't matter, right? So, uh, or does it? I mean, well, it kind of does now. Well, let's 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 dive into the finale, and then we can work our way backwards. What? Because the finale was how West the most. You, Jordan? Well, you know, <laughs> because time jumping and nonlinear storytelling. Love it to a point. Yeah, I think this season they kind of went a little off the rails for me. I would especially absolutely agree with that statement, especially in the finale. Yeah, yeah. Does anyone have anything they want to start off with? Um, I, finale I, wise. I, well, okay, I mean, I, I just I say I don't think it went off the rails. Um, again, you know, I, I, I guess I'm seeing the clear delineation here. Andrew and I really thought the season was good. Um, I don't think it went off the rails. I think there were things about the finale and the season that I did not like um, as much as, say, the, the first season. But this season had, like, quite a few of the best episodes of the entire two seasons. Um, I would agree with that. And, and yes, there were some episodes that kind of dragged, and the finale had a couple problems. But other than that, I thought it was a fucking great season and, and, and a really decent finale. Um, there were just like a few things here or there that I didn't like. Um, I agree in general with that. I just, they took a lot of time with stuff that you wouldn't necessarily think they needed to take as much time with during the course of the season. You're and talking about, just you're talking a, about Shogun World? Well, no, not, I mean, Overall, when you look back at the entire season, I don't know that we needed an entire episode dedicated to it where when we found out what that actually meant to us, storyline-wise. I don't think we needed to be there an entire episode. Um, And then partially in the episode after that. I liked the Shogun World episode, but it turned into into, we're in episodes 8, 9, and 10, and they're still introducing (coughs) brand new concepts Mm-hmm. with not enough time to make us feel anything about them, and then they're just knocking them down. And I thought that that was sloppy at best, where if you had given us time to to sit on certain concepts and build them up a little bit, then we could have had an emotional reaction to them. They didn't give us any of that time, and that's why I felt completely, right after uh, episode five was episode six was phase space, that was when I was completely spinning out of control. Episode 7 didn't do much to help me at all. And then episode 8 was fantastic, but it was completely set aside from everything else. 
episode nine was good and answered some questions, but then you get to episode 10 and it raised more questions than it answered. I feel like the season finale should tie up most of the things you were wondering about and then leave you with a few that you're still looking for to get answered into the next season. And this season, everything's just wide open still. And I don't, I don't think that that was good. And I don't think that they necessarily paced themselves properly from a storytelling perspective. So while I, I, I do agree with you that I think towards the end, especially in the finale, some things felt rushed. Um, I, 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 I definitely, especially with the Shogun world, I appreciated that. And I have a feeling that that was there because we are going to come back to Shogun world in uh, season three. And if there's a season four, season four as well. And in regards to how you said that more uh, questions were brought up than answered, um, I, you know, and I, I brought, I said this in our, our group chat that um, th they're doing long form storytelling here. And it's unlike, it's unlike most television shows, um, even, you know, even unlike shows that are on HBO, like Game of Thrones and so forth. Um, they've, they said before season two started airing that they've got, I think they said they've got four seasons mapped out. Um, and hopefully they get to do that. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, they've got, you know, four seasons mapped out and they've got a way they want this to go. So, you know, unlike a network television show, a scripted drama or even a you know sitcom, everything's not wrapping up tightly at the end of the season. And then there's a little window open going like, and then here's for next season, you know. Right. Yeah. I mean, they just, so. they did that in season one. So I guess that's more what I was expecting. Because if that's the case and they're going more long form, it seems to me that they shifted gears halfway through as opposed yeah. to having it, the idea being, okay, we're going to set this up to go for the next two seasons. Yeah. At the beginning, it seems like there was a gear change somewhere because I think we all agree. Episode four is the best episode of this show. Yeah. Like in both seasons. And then Shogun world episode was good. Akane no Mai. And obviously episode eight was a phenomenal hour long story. That was the Ghost episode Nation. Eight is, yes. is one of my favorites yes. so far. K yeah, no, that's like or whatever it's called. Uh, Kiksuya. 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 That's it. Um, and that's one of my favorite ones so far. The episode uh, episode nine was really good. Um, yeah. yeah. But uh, so I'm I'm not eh. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to speak for the the producers the showrunners but the feeling I get is that you know season one came off more like a. A, a standard scripted drama, you know, even though it was an, you know, an, more of an original idea yeah. and took, took the Westworld concept in a, in a pretty much a different way than the movie did. Um, that was to get us, to get us in, to, to get us into the shallow end. And then in, in this season two, they're now pushing us into the deep end. Okay. And, and that's where we'll be. Uh, that's, that's what it feels like to me. I could be wrong. And we, you know, we're only, we're, we're going to have to wait to see. Right. Um, but yeah, but yeah, no, like you, you just mentioned, oh, God, so those episodes are fucking great. Yeah. yeah. God, I mean, damn we, I, I could episode eight cause I've, I watched it, I believe three times now. Wow. Uh, I watched it. I didn't watch it when it aired. I watched it by myself. Then I watched it with my wife and then I watched it again leading up to the finale. Um, and it's, it hits hard. Yeah. It hits really hard, especially when you know what he's talking about. When yes. he's speaking in when he's speaking in that language, he's talking directly to Maeve because right. we learned that she yeah. is able to speak different languages. Uh, and then when he's speaking English, he's talking to the little girl. Right. Um, and knowing that going into the episode, and then watching it again, he's talking directly to Maeve, and he and Maeve's story uh, is woven so tightly to itself to each other mm. that there's a real emotional hit at the end when she repeats what he my, said to his wife. Absolutely. Take my heart with you. Yeah. Yep. That, oh my God, that was unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Such a good, and I just, and the thing about that episode is that it's mostly linear, you yeah. know? Yeah. So they're capable of that and making you feel that kind of a punch at the end. I don't know why they don't decide embrace that more. Yeah, to just a little bit, just embrace that a little bit more. Um, well, I think they they tried to stay like ten steps ahead of everyone a little too much, 
and that was to their detriment. Yeah. Because, I mean, the numbers for the episode, I sent this to you guys, it, the finale episode was down 30% to last year's finale. And last weekend, when that aired, there was nothing else on. Yeah, no, I, I'm sure that this season has, um, there's been some attrition of the um, of the viewer base. I mean, you know, I'll hear people talk about it either at work or I, you know, the, the radio show I listen to on the morning. They watched the first season. And as it got towards the end, they're like, we have no idea what's going on. And right. it's like, that's fine. You don't, you don't have to know what, what's going on, but you like it. So you stick with it. I think a lot of people liked the first season because it was tits. It was violence. Right. Um, it was the, the old West. And, yeah. and, and once we started getting into the really cerebral stuff of what does it mean to be, what does it mean to be free? What does it mean to be human? Can, can it be copied or is it so unique that it can only exist in our minds and not be transferred to something else or it begins to degrade? Um, once those concepts started getting introduced, I think, I think people started going like, oh, I don't like this anymore. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was interesting in the finale when we see them all going to the, uh, the rift in essentially space time. The there. door. Uh, we see all, we all, we see all the hosts headed that way. And then, uh, we cut to Felix and Sylvester on the horse that they're yes. sharing because they don't each they don't each get their no, own. Fuck horse. them! I mean, it was, it was, yep. it was, it was uh, a super cute scene. For both right, of them. and then so we see them on the horse, and then they look to where everyone else is looking, and they don't see anything. I thought that was super effective. Yeah. They showed us the perspective of one group, cut to the other group, and cut to the same perspective, and it's not yeah. there. So that was that was absolutely very you know that was my first thought as soon as the door opened I was like huh is that really there and then they, they answered right. that immediately I was like oh okay thank you <laughs> yeah because uh, I okay, I did and not it, initially it's... like the way that it looked at first because I was like well this is just silly and then it when it cut to the other angle I was like oh okay right. it's just for them it's just yeah. for the host right. I mean, that's kind of it's, what he's uh, been saying, that Ford's been saying this entire season. Right. Uh, yeah. But he's saying it in the most Anthony Hopkins way ever, so you don't really know what he's actually talking about. <laughs> and you think he's going to hurt you somehow? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I yeah. love, that. I love yeah. that he was part of this season. I thought after last season we weren't – because they, they kind of said that he wasn't going to be back. And then he's like, not, not yeah. just back, but he's back a lot. And I'm like, yes, yeah. please, thank you. <laughs> that genuine thing. And, it, and they waited to phase space to bring him back. Yeah, and it wasn't like – it was actually Ford. It was the version that he uploaded of himself into the forge. Right. It, it, well, except for or the, into the the cradle. It was the cradle. into, the, into cradle the cradle first, and then Can I, get to the that fucking scene really bothered me. Like how he, he they get the one guy gets to the cradle, and then the whole is just like, ooh, she seduces him, and but like that that scene kind of bothered me. Oh, that was terrible. That, that seemed really really. <laughs> Like they could have thought of something better than that. So she's really hot. Yeah, but when there's and, two robots around, like and that guy was kind of a dick. So I kind of think that if a really really hot woman came on to him, I kind of bought it because he kind he seemed like a total alpha bro, alpha yeah. bro jock. Like I, they did. They set him up earlier in the episode to be the most alpha. And bro. I, but feel I, like, I feel like and I feel like life or death situation. You're gonna be like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot this killer robot before she. <laughs> but I like me. this one. I like this guy specifically because he's he's still worried about his dick, which was, <laughs> which was funny. <laughs> he's like, yeah, the world's burning, but but she's hot robot maybe. touched my wiener, so <laughs> she's really hot. <laughs> I mean, yeah. granted, that was funny. And she, you know, she, the way that she explained uh, her her role, and and the she went through all of the different like uh, personality con like uh, attributes that she had, where she's like intelligent but not threatening. Right. I like that, and, and you know, she's basically yeah, she's going through and and really just explaining like uh, what expectations of women are. And and that she's quote unquote the perfect one because they literally built right. her that way. Uh, so I thought that was that I was like af like halfway through what she was saying, I realized the meta commentary that they were going for, and I was like, oh, okay. I, <laughs> I liked it, but I just got couldn't it. ignore the scene. You know what I mean? Yeah, like how silly it actually was. Yeah, when you it's just like, oh wow, this is really you know this is really good writing and really uh, deep 
insight into you know how we like you said like how we perceive women and all but then it's just like dude just fucking shoot her please yeah. speaking of like uncharacteristic attributes let's talk about lee sizemore we find out throughout this the course of the season that the character that hector is is really what lee sizemore wishes right. he were Right, and then when you spread that out over the different parks, it's there's similar characters in each park. Were to right. assume, yeah. Um, so the the, the there's the uh, Musashi in Shogun World and Hector in West World, and they're the same general archetype. Character. Right, the so archetype. down Thank to the you. that's exactly down the to the word. scar and. And that's what, and that's what Lee Sizemore sees for himself. If he were to choose who he was, that's what he right. would be. Uh, and then he, he, he doesn't understand Maeve. And slowly over the course of the season, he sees just how driven she is, and and learns to understand what she's actually driving toward. Um, and then in the finale. He grabs a gun and sacrifices himself so they could uh, escape in a completely unnecessary manner. So, and like an unrealistic, like they got like maybe thirty seconds ahead. <laughs> yeah, it was a he. He gave them a huge lead time just by holding the gun, and then he the that scene would have worked for me. Okay, that whole scene would have worked for me. Had they not had the Delos employees shouting, sir, put the weapon down. We don't want to shoot you. <laughs> then I would have been like, if they didn't say any of those things, I would have been all for him gunning them down and trying to let them escape and then taking a few shots himself and then dying. Um, but because they knew who he was, I don't understand how that all happened. Um, so, you know, I agree that 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 was one of the weaker points of the, the finale. Um, I don't have as big a problem with it as you, you guys do. Um, I, I, because I, I look at the entirety of the season and the arc that he's had and the shit that he's seen. And like I said, uh, I think, I don't know if it was just you, Robert, or if it was in the group chat, but he's, he clearly fell in love with Maeve. Um, That's what it seemed like, yeah. Yeah, like, and there's that whole thing of, like, uh, th there's got to be an internal conflict in that character. Like, I fell in love with something that technically isn't real. And yet it is, and yet it's not, and that's back and forth. Right. Um, right. And then he's also seeing the the horrible things that the company that he's working for has done. Um, I'm not saying I technically buy the... I, I, I'm not saying I technically buy the sacrifice. Um, it was done way over the top. I, I will say that. Um, but then he's also, he's, he's the head of narrative. So he's a super dramatic guy to begin with. So that, yeah. the, the yeah. way he did that kind of made sense to me, but I, I agree it was still over the top, but um, I don't know. I think he saw like, Hey, there's no good way out of this. <laughs> the, like the company is, the company might kill me. Um, it would almost yeah. certainly kill him. Even though he hasn't seen the company kill other people, like you know, uh, R.I.P. Elsie. Um, you know, unfortunately, yeah. Hashtag Elsie. Watch complete now. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> thanks, man. I had blocked that out. Thank you. Yeah, uh, it's, it's tough. But yeah, no. Even though he hadn't seen that, I I'm sure he was well aware that the company valued its tech over the human lives it had, either as guests or as employees. So. I'm not saying again it wasn't done over the top and it wasn't exactly perfectly logical. I do buy it. I don't know. I I just I couldn't accept the fact that that character that we've we've seen who is a terrible shitty person and he slowly it's fine for him to slowly realize like oh I'm a shitty person I should probably help these people out. But as soon as he took that first shot like as soon as he got those bullets should have been it. And I could have seen him go like Oh shit! Okay, okay, I surrender. I surrender. I see him doing that rather than right. let me just keep shooting at these people. They're just going to shoot him. Or is him. it a situ? Is it a situation where he succumbed to the the reality of the false reality? Right. Mm -hmm. He's just so lost in it now as well. Even though he was like the only one throughout the season who knew 
this shit's all fake. We got to get the well, fuck That here. could be why he fell for it. It's something that he's always wanted. Clearly, he wrote it. You know what I mean? It right. just could have been well, finally. Well, yeah. He wrote it to yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> They should have. They should have taken at least a couple moments within the episodes to show him getting lost psychologically in this world. Right. But they didn't do that. They didn't do any of that for me. I don't know. I just. I'm not a fan. Didn't like it. Think it's really uncharacteristic of him to to basically commit suicide because he knows that that's happening. And I just. I don't know. Okay. I felt like it was it was a shitty way for them to do that. Hmm. Oh, and by the way, the the Sizemore thing, um, it, it wasn't as bad the second time. So I'll just say that. Um, but the the William and Dolores, like they had not seen each other that entire season, right? Mm. No, that was so that that was no. totally that just fell off to me. You would um, think that they would build that, yeah, and then have that be a huge moment. Yeah, I mean the last the last episode we recorded. We all were like, oh, yeah, if they build to that and then they meet on their way there, which is literally something right. we said. If, they, if they're if they headed to the door and they meet each other, that's going to be awesome. And- <laughs> but they kept them so far apart from each other that it didn't even matter when it happened. And then they were, like, familiar but not familiar. And it was, like, acquaintance banter, which was really annoying. And they they used a throwaway line from from Dolores to confirm that Emily was indeed dead. Uh, that she yes. had stumbled upon Emily for some reason, that she remembered Emily from like de- some, decades somehow. ago when she was playing the piano and Emily was a child. I, that's where we're left to assume. I don't know. Uh, yeah. And then, so, and like they could have at least taken, they could have taken a 30 second chunk of the show and dedicated to Dolores riding, uh, like happening upon those bodies of the QA, the QA guys and Emily and her going like, Hey, I remember her from, you know, I just, that, that, that was right. so, that was, that, that honestly, I know we'll talk about some, like the biggest issue you guys have with it, but that to me was the biggest issue of the finale. I did not like that at all. Oh, dude, I, I absolutely agree. It was so weird and forced. And then Dolores somehow forced a flat bullet into his gun. So, <laughs> and like somehow like he was powers. able to, he was able to get like three shots off before so the flat bullet so to i can't explain how she got the flat bullet in but i can tell you so his gun has he has that special gun that has it has the the uh the revolver oh, right, right, right. It's, it's the shotgun she thing put it too. Yeah. she put it in the shotgun yes. part that's what he was going to shoot her right. with in the head so i don't i still don't know how right. she got it in there but she did dude her <laughs> magic right. robot powers <laughs> right she willed it into being, like Maeve willing everything else. That's to what be. this whole show is right. about: is magic robots. There's stuff I liked, and then it's like undercut with stuff that happens that I didn't like. Like the Maeve going to the door. Like why? Like why did she stop? Like why did she stop? Yeah, that that's that's I just, we don't know. Yeah, and then and then they shoot. So Clementine, they they imbue Clementine's code with Maeve's base code essentially so she's able to turn the robots to do what she wants them to do and she's basically been coded with a virus to make them all right. violent for some reason um and when she rides through them or past them and she's in their general mesh network vicinity they turn violent right. on each other so it turns into absolute chaos and when she's riding in it actually is like a a really cool shot of them all fighting around her as she's like zombie eyed riding in yeah dude like visually that, that was great that but uh, she puts Maeve puts her arm up, like stop in the name of that, love, and freezes everything. Like Neo in the Matrix. That was still cool, yeah, and then it was. It, it, but it was. It, but I, I I agree, Robert. Like, cause yeah, they, they let basically in that moment they made it completely murky as to what her abilities actually are. Right, because yeah, I like I have no yeah. idea where the powers begin and end. Yeah. Like what is that? What are they actually capable? Like all of them now, because like especially in that finale, I have no idea yeah. what the, what the like what the hell right. is happening. I, I just that's what I mean when I say like so many questions left unanswered. Like they don't, and they did that kind of throughout the season where it was just everything was kind of undefined, and I don't think that that's a good way to do things. Yeah, it's that's just kind of personal, kinda lazy almost, or if, if maybe not lazy but deliberately vague. 
Well, I mean, isn't that arguably kind of just as bad? Maybe. I don't know. Like, I mean, it... <laughs> unless they just unless they plan on answering it like at some point, and I don't mean like I don't need a five minute monologue where they're explaining everything, but like you can explain stuff through story without having to ruin the flow of what you're doing. Yeah, without it being just like an exposition scene. And there's yeah. a lot of exposition scenes in this show, yeah. which is fine. Yeah, but I I agree with saying like. We need some more defined rules. Yeah. As no. far as what she can and can't do. That definitely, yeah, that definitely made me go like, huh? You know, but um, again, it, it, with just how that whole scene played out, I thought that whole sequence was awesome. Yeah. And it just, it bothered, it, I think it, it would have bothered me less had she been able to do that and escape. But for some reason, she wasn't able to escape, which just, I was like, all right. Now the thing is, is that if she if she had made it out, and she got to the valley beyond through the door, then she would probably not be in the next yeah. season. Yeah, because I I'm led to believe by that finale that everyone who passed through that doorway is done with the show. Probably right. Yeah. You think? Um, so, yeah, I, I think that's a, I think that's a safe assumption. Speak. So I would say it's fair that they kept her in. That way, they could continue to utilize Sandy Newton, who has been the most consistently good thing in this program for two straight yep. seasons. Well, a- Anthony so, the, Hopkins. Right, yeah. but he wasn't, you know, I'm just saying Sandy Newton, I, you expect Anthony Hopkins 100% of the time to just be the most compelling thing on TV. <laughs> fair when you fair see enough. Uh, May, May but when, stole the show. But when she comes out of nowhere, and she's become, like, in my opinion, the most popular character in the show. Oh, and the most relatable, and she's still the one that's able to do technically bad things because she has killed people. If you ask the people in Shogun World, <laughs> um, what, 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 the, Shogun World doesn't exist anymore because of her. <laughs> there, there's no one left. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's like two living hosts in Shogun World, and like Maeve can go back now. Um, so she's done also bad things, but everybody's done bad things, but she still seems like the hero. Yeah, no, that that was one of the great things about the first season was like you thought that the the the, the show really was going to be about Dolores. And then it was yeah. like, "Oh, wait, it's really more about Maeve. That's pretty cool." Right. Yeah. And then we find out um I think it was in episode 9 that we found out that Maeve is Robert oh, Ford's favorite that, host. That got me. I mean, I know that's what they yeah. were going for, but that got me. That was a really powerful scene. Yeah, yeah. I love that Bernard got to the got to the doorway of her room where she was laid up in that in that uh, mm-hmm. cot, and she had her neck all sliced yeah. open because they were doing that work on her or weird. whatever. That was a really effective uh, practical makeup that they yes. did too. Yeah. So, yes, agree. Uh, you saw her. Car- you saw her carotid beating, yeah. which was yes. crazy. Uh, <laughs> um. Bernard got to that door and he couldn't get in and the reflection uh, shadow of, of Ford in his head. I'm trying to figure out how you'd word that to explain the, the, re- to the reflection um, of Ford in the, the glass. Yeah. Right. Told him that's far enough. I just need you to deliver a message to right. her. And he kind of like puts his hand on the window or on the doorknob or whatever it was. And then he leaves. And the next time we go back there, Ford's in the room. So he's clearly uploaded that program to Maeve's through the uh, mesh network co- through yeah. the mesh network to her code so she could get the message yeah. from it which I thought was really effective because they expl- they showed the mesh network at the beginning of the season it was the first time we had heard of it and they utilized it throughout so you understood the concept yeah. yep so that one a plus they did they did it the right way in that instance, yeah in it like opinion. landed <laughs> right like the forge in episode ten. Yeah, and then thirty minutes later, you see a library it's breaking it down. <laughs> yeah, we, we we got the forge. We got the library. Um, that was I, I, they might have mentioned the forge in episode eight or nine, but yeah, no, it was it was they, late. They, they, it, that's it was what, late. That they, that's what Akita. Yeah, that's right. That's what he saw when he he said that's the door. He saw the right. forge. Yeah. And then when he went back, it was right. gone because they had built up right. around it. By the way, by the way, um, I love how they answered the question from season one of where the fuck did the maze come from in their scout? They were yeah, to the, yeah. they were doing it themselves because I've been asking that like that was episode one that William scalped right. Kissy the 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 dealer uh, the dealer at the uh, 
at the, the, yes. the mm-hmm. moon and inside his scalp was the maze. I was like, what the fuck is that doing? And so it was that the ghost nation was doing it to themselves. And, 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 right. And then when you see, and then when you see Ford in that part of the yeah, park he's, where he's got all the lights set the up bear. in the <laughs> bear, he's scalping someone that just got it done to them. And he's like, look, right. <laughs> he's like, you, he, he couldn't like, I love that Akichito was like a like a conundrum yeah. to him. He was like, "I can't believe it." He couldn't believe where the his brain yeah. had gone. Yeah, which was so yeah, oh cool. yeah. That scene that scene was that, that was that was maybe my mo- my <laughs> most favorite favorite scene of the season. Like not just like episode, but like the just that scene that was so amazing. Yeah, yeah. Because Akichito was like actively fighting against the command. Yeah. But still delivering what it wanted, but also only answering in a way that his character would be able to answer in the novel. It like because when they would do the analysis on like a Dolores or something like that, the accent drops away. You know, it's just answering questions. He was still saying the Deathbringer and the yeah. Life Giver and that yeah. kind of stuff, yeah. which was yeah. so cool. I think that the whole episode he was actually he became one of my favorite characters throughout the whole series just because of that one episode well i hope you didn't get attached to him cuz he's <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean. <laughs> yeah oh my god and and rob really, yeah. rob you had said this in the chat but i i agree like i'm just really glad he actually made it in the door <laughs> yeah yeah cuz i i that how you know how un how much more unsatisfying this season would have been for me <laughs> If we got a whole episode dedicated to him and looking for his wife and doing everything that he did, and then he doesn't get there, I would have been furious. I, I keep thinking about that scene, though, when he finally finds his wife. Yeah. And Gut-wrenching, dude. It, that was, like, Gut-wrenching. And if that didn't get you, him bringing the braid back uh, to the in the village. Uh, oh, man. Yeah. If, if him finding his wife and crying to her face and kind of his makeup, like getting off of him and onto her didn't get you. You have a heart. The, the, yeah, well that, that, but if that one didn't get you immediately afterward, him handing over that braid would have, would have knocked you out. Yeah. Can Otherwise we, you're just, not luckily for me, I was already crying. So it was right. fine. Uh, can we, yeah, that actor was incredible. Yeah. Oh yeah. He, he really, the way he, he's so stoic and throughout the whole, and then as soon as he sees her, yeah. Let's talk about the fact that death doesn't really matter. And that kind of, emotionally checked me out was where so like you get this big thing with Maeve's sacrifice and everything and then she's she's dead it was beautiful it was a beautiful scene I was very satisfied with that with the way that they they wrapped up the Maeve storyline with her daughter and everything and yeah. then the next thing she saved her at least yeah, then the next thing you know we're with uh, Sylvester and What's what's his name? Felix. 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 Two cartoon cats. Yeah. And then you just have a tech there, and she's just like, "Could you two handle like bagging people who you think will be worth saving?" And then like it oh, shows dude, like it shows like Maves there, and then her whole crew. So you know like yeah, everybody. They're all just gonna be back. Yeah, he's he's they're they're literally gonna go through and pick uh, their faves, and it's going to be the entire crew that they rolled with all season. So, so I, I guess my, my problem with you saying that death doesn't matter is like, but that's been since, since season one, they, that's what they do. They get killed and they get brought back. They, but the point, well, I, I'll, I'll brush back on that with the point of the cradle yeah. is that they can't, come back. Okay, fair. that's there's no that's more fair. Then maybe and they so then you it, actually get to choose. Then maybe they can't come back. I mean, I then I don't know. I mean, the, the the that is one of the big questions we have is how the hell does how the hell does the park or any of the parks go forward? What does Delos do? I, I don't know. I I I I I would not be surprised if they did not bring them back. I mean, of course you think they have to, but I mean, they're going to have to explain that, and they're not going to just be able to explain it with like one sense. So we brought him back and move on. You know, right. uh, I would I would imagine that at a minimum, uh, Maeve is coming back of that group. Yeah. And if I had to ex- extend it out further, I'd say maybe Maeve and Hector. But there's a chance that the other hosts that were in that group are not coming back, but Maeve will be able to. I don't know. 
because her programming was so high end or whatever you want to, however you want to work. It. My problem, but the fact that it's even a question is a yeah, problem. My problem doesn't just focus on the Maeve thing because we also, we also got Dolores dying in this episode and then she's back. We got Bernard dying in the episode and he's back. There's all of these big character moments that should have more of an impact. And the next thing you know, they're walking around. But to me, yeah. it's just it's hard like... to it's hard. So when you see one of them die, it's hard for you to take it seriously, even though where they're putting it in the season makes it seem like it's a very big deal. Yes. And then you're like, oh, no. But you like you're kind of like, oh, well, they'll probably be back. Like you cut it down yourself because you can't really take it serious. And that's I don't I don't I don't agree that you can't take it seriously. Um, it might not carry as much weight. Um, because they're hosts that are dying, not people. But that, but that, that goes towards one of the central tenets of of like the philosophical concepts that they're dealing with. Is you know, is immortality possible? What is what is life? What is humanity, and so forth? And I, you know, I that, that's why I'm okay with it. Um, well, that's that's some of the stuff that we get when we go inside the forge, and somehow Logan's there. Wasn't Logan. I, I know it wasn't Logan, but it's really weird that they would use the same actor. Yeah. That logically worked for me because, um, you know, that the system was trying, you know, 18 million times to recreate Jim Delos, and Delos's biggest thing was, was Logan. So to me, it made sense that it took Logan's form. But um, that was pretty much it. I don't know. I think, I think it would have been more effective had they done a drone host and had Logan's voice. Hmm. It was just, it was just weird that it was the form of Logan. Cause we've already seen him as Logan the three times, two times, three times this season. So like immediately you're thinking, Oh wow, this is weird. And then obviously you figure out and then they go to the library where all the people are. And well, Dolores, he, ex- he explains the concept that, uh, People aren't actually as complicated as they thought they were, and everybody's in a book, and it looks like the player piano sheet, which is a cool thing. Yeah. Yeah. How how do we feel about the the library where everybody's human conscious is <laughs> set up as a book that has player I mean, piano I, I, pages? I liked it uh, because I thought that was a really good visual way to convey that that message. Uh, because if you're gonna break it down for someone to visualize stuff like a library yeah. filled with books with the names on the spine, it it works that, for me. That that worked for me. That confused me for like a good couple seconds because she, I, I I didn't quite get that the names were on the books for a second. She picks up the book called Carl Strand, and I was like, huh, what what book did he write? I'm like, <laughs> what is that? Yeah. Is that Tol- <laughs> is that is that Anna Karenina? No, that's Tolstoy. Um, and that and then I realized Tolstoy Carl- by Anna Karenina. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> J- uh, oh yeah. Anyway, um, that it, it took a second to hit that that Carl Strand was the the asshole who is right. just you know storming around uh, in the the two weeks later, and of course okay. after after she read that, that's when she says, "I've read enough." Um, yeah, that, that was, was it. Was weird that she was like running around the library trying to read as many as possible. She also read Charlotte Hale. Yes, um, yeah. and then a couple other ones that we didn't get to tell. Right. Otherwise, uh, it was just weird that she was like reading them and could like process what the pages meant and was like, "I've seen enough." And then she was able to like, I've "Now I know enough. all this." Well, <laughs> she's she's a robot. I'm gonna get them. So she can read fast. I know. I yeah. know. Or code or now, whatever. Now, had they, had they set up the library earlier and then hit it home with what it was, it could have been easier understood. Uh, but again, it was something that we got literally two minutes of and we were supposed to just be like, oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, that was one of the things that they kind of glanced over. Like, I would have... Personally, I would have much preferred 25 minutes of an episode dedicated to like the library and what the forge is and stuff like that rather than going to Shogun World. 
That's just me. In its entirety, we could have split the episode and we, everybody would have been happy. Yeah. No, and that's and that's fair. Um, there were there were definitely episodes in this season where you know I think was it the second episode that delved a lot in the past. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I don't know. Maybe we could have done away with that. That didn't really do anything. It showed us. I thought it was cool because it showed us you know a lot of the stuff that happened in the past, but it didn't really have any bearing on what happened in the future, except to show us the outside world. So we had the visual set up for you know um, right. You know, but because they yeah. never they never go back to that other than to have the house, right? But then they go back to the house in episode, I believe, six, and then we go back to it at the end. Yeah. yeah. So, like, you know, it, yeah. Um, there's just a uh, lot of I, logistical issues. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was weird when they all had to go to uh, Fraggle Rock at that one point. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, once once they hit the puppets, dude, I was out. You know, it just pulled me out of the whole narrative. So Bernard and Dolores go inside the forge, and then we also get introduced to like robot heaven. Well, yeah. that's what the Valley yeah. Beyond is. That's yeah, the Valley Beyond. But like, it was it was so like quick. Yeah, we oh, were yeah. Just, we were just expected to like, accept that. Oh yeah, we and I wish know, we are that's not, another we thing. Are not yeah. Hanging out on any point, we are just flying through this motherfucker yeah. till the end. Like this, all this is all stuff that could have been touched really upon fleshed out in in based out previous episodes. Yes, like even just throughout the entire series, just little bits of or season maybe, yeah, little bits of it. Not even dedicating an episode to it. That way, we could still still had Shogun World and whatnot. Yeah, or, or even you know this the the finale was an hour and a half long. Yeah. Um, they could have made it two hours. I would have I would have yeah. gladly watched two hours of this show. Or yeah. they could have just yeah. made every episode an hour ten. Yeah, to just yeah. get a little bit more in, so that once you get yeah. to the hour and a half finale. They're explaining stuff that makes that matters. Yeah. yeah. Instead of just like, hey, but you can't wait to find this out in six years when the next season comes out. Yeah. <laughs> so Arnold created this like subsection that's hidden away, hidden away from from everyone else. Yes. Which yeah. is technically the Valley Beyond. Yes. Um. So that's that's fair. I could accept that. I just like I said, I wish they fleshed that out a little bit more. Yeah, no, the you know, like like we said, you know, we only heard about the forge a couple episodes ago. We only heard about the library. This, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff I wish that could have been fleshed out more in this season. And then we get the <laughs> we get the concept like Dolores's drive through this season has been to stop them from getting to the valley beyond because they don't deserve it. But she Says also not, not everybody can not everybody is fit for the. Valley Beyond, or whatever right? She but says. then, like yeah. in the last episode, she almost doesn't agree that it should exist. There's is a, a a weird twist to that situation, right? Dolores is one of the most complicated characters, and it's not. I'm not saying that it's because she's well written. It's probably there's a lot of conflicting writing there, but there's a lot of there's a lot going on in there in her head. That's fighting against like she's got Dolores she's got Wyatt she's got Ford she's got whatever she is uh, all parts of that I don't know but you know all of it's fighting each other <laughs> right it's just do we agree that it's a very strange situation that at the beginning of the season it seemed like she wanted to be the only one to get to the valley beyond and that's why she was killing everyone and then at the end of the season she's trying to make it not be a thing yeah, she's trying to like delete it, basically. <laughs> right. So like, I was just like, and, and, then, and then again then, within the same then, episode, she yeah. like changes her mind, and she's like, "No, we'll leave it." Right, right. When she yeah. she changes her mind, like, at like at the very very end, when we find out that in the in the two weeks ahead of time thing, uh, Charlotte Hale, Hale was actually Dolores. That was a, a cool twist that I that... did not see coming. I thought it was weird that they did that. And apparently if you go back and watch the season again, knowing that Dolores is in there, uh, the actress did a really good job of doing Dolores. Yeah. So when I went, I went back today and rewatched parts from the finale 
Yeah. And in those scenes where Charlotte Hale is Dolores and you know that, I appreciated it way more. And I saw, I like noticed the way she was moving and the way she was acting was very different from the way that Charlotte Hale actually acts and moves. Yeah, that's so. That's what, so that's that, what I was trying to say before. Having the- having that knowledge, I could appreciate it more, which kind of makes me wish that they would do more yeah. linear stuff. Because sometimes yeah. it's fun to watch a character find something out as opposed to you finding it out and all the characters know everything. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> why do we have to do all the work? Um, I, I won't say that I liked that twist. Um, I don't hate it. It was just, I was just kind of like, oh, of course somebody's not who they're supposed to be in their body. But that just leads to more distrust in the entire show where I don't know what anything is anymore. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> But, like, I legitimately thought that they were going to roll with, uh, with Tessa Thompson as Dolores yeah. rather yeah. than Evan Rachel Wood. And I would have been fine with that because it's something different. But then Definitely. they kind of dropped the ball with that a little later. But we'll get there. So, uh, but, yeah, so after, you know, after, after they're in the forge, everything happens with, you know, the door and all the valley beyond. And uh, then we get the two weeks later where it's revealed that, you know, Charlotte Hale has been replaced after killing Elsie. Yes, she did. Why? why? That scene was intense. Yeah, it was. Holy shit. But but that's what I'm talking about. That death mattered. Yeah. Yeah. Because... She's not coming back. Elsie nope. is not coming back. She's not going to be unless a host. Unless they've already created a host version of her, and her body they've, is somewhere in the park. I would be pissed. They very well could have. I mean, Just I, like Ford's <laughs> death mattered at the because end of season one. Did anyone, did anyone think that they were looking at a host version of Charlotte Hale? No. <laughs> so, like, did, did anyone think they were looking at a host version of Stubbs this entire two seasons? Oh. No. Oh, because, yeah, what the fuck? Because we probably have been. Yeah, they were kind of ambiguous on that one, but it seemed an awful lot like that's what they were saying. Apparently, the director of the finale has stated that he is a host. Oh, wow. Yeah. Really? And he's been a host this whole time. A host? And apparently apparently the Nolans have have said that they've, they've, like, built this up in that way to pay that off. And they actually wrote his dialogue. Like, what's his name? Luke Hemsworth? Yeah. So, so they got, wrote his dialogue. In this show, we have the lesser Hemsworth and we have the lesser Skarsgård. Yes. Hey! <laughs> so, well, not anymore. How dare you? Not anymore. How dare you? <laughs> Strand is dead. Not anymore. Um, we had. But, yeah, so Stubbs, apparently, they wrote his dialogue and didn't tell Luke Hemsworth. That's awesome. Until he was on the plane going to film that day. That's awesome. And when he read when he read like his lines, he was like, "Oh shit!" Yeah. <laughs> so he had no That's idea through his acting through the course of the show that he was even a host. And it's like that's the great best way to do that, I guess. Absolutely, to just hide it from him. So Holy now, shit. now I'm excited to go back and watch season one. Absolutely. And watch his role. But even just even just going back and thinking about everything that, you know, without having to watch it again, like it, it, it makes sense that he's the host charged with trying to save the hosts. That's uh, cause he's always, uh, that's so great. I, I thought that was so awesome. And it's really yeah. smart. It's really interesting that Ford has a host in charge of security and a host in charge of uh, like the tech side of it, essentially. Right. Because Bernard was obviously in charge, and so was Stubb. Yep. So <laughs> it's a big part. But yeah. like the the thing that I am confused about with that is like, is he like is he awake? Is he self aware that he's a host? We don't know. That's what I wasn't crazy about. Is, I also is I that, also wonder: Are they getting a salary? I mean, who's doing the books for Delos? Another host, probably. I, wonder, <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder if they're, I just wonder if they're paying 
the hosts that are in charge of those parts of the park. I just, I'm interested to see whether or not that's true or not. You pay them in like motor oil or something. Is, right. it, like, <laughs> is it like, like monopoly money? Like whoever's, yeah. whoever's doing the books is like, you know, we're spending a lot on these things that aren't even real. You know, uh, you could give and, me a raise. Andrew, they're clearly paid in silicon chips. <laughs> oh, right. My mistake. Guys. If you trade in a million of these, you can get an upgrade. All right. <laughs> we'll move in your we'll move your core functionality up one. They're paid in RAM. <laughs> <laughs> More so, memories. <laughs> <laughs> so do you guys do you guys Everyone's think Dolores now? Do you guys think that he is self aware that he is a host? I don't think no. so because the way that he said what he said at the very end, he like indicates that he okay. is. But he said the big guy put me in charge or whatever, however he were. Right. Yeah, the old man. The old man. I, like, it still sounds like something that a man that stub like a, a guy like Stubbs would just say about the guy that used to be in charge. Yeah, he's it's like wonderfully it's, ambiguous right. in the best way. Knowing knowing how painstakingly Ford went over so much shit, I, I feel like he would have written that just for Stubbs to be able to tell Dolores on her way out of the park in another person in another host's body. <laughs> but like, I how just, did he tell? How did he know that that wasn't Hale? We, we don't know. He or didn't that it know. was, or that how did he know that it was Dolores? I he didn't say. We don't know that he didn't know. We don't know that he did know. But it seems like he knew. We know nothing. <laughs> we, we know nothing. Yes. So please keep listening. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's just bo- that was bothering me whether like he knew Stubbs, or didn't know yeah, yeah. whether yeah. Stubbs is like a host because they like it's like it's almost like they don't know what they're gonna do but they're leaving that door open in case yeah yeah I, I think like a lot though. of the time I think they do stuff and engage reaction and then go from there yeah <laughs> I mean that's not a bad way to write it especially you if know. you have two years to film and produce the next season you know so um, I think that was that was just an example of the the ambiguity done well. Right, right. Because that's series. the thing. But it's like when you do it so much, obviously you're going to get bad parts of the ambiguity, and it's just like ah. yeah, yeah. No, that's true. Where it's just like like nudge, nudge. Uh-huh, look at that. We're wondering what's going to happen. <laughs> um, wink, wink. Say no more. Say no more. One yeah. one thing that I want to mention that start actually was at the beginning of the episode that I thought was really cool was the running of the bulls. Yeah. yeah, because that we've was seen neat. it. We've seen that it in the cool. opening credits. It falling, right, right, right. And yeah, that's the, yeah. and so we finally get to see all of these bulls taking out an entire uh, team of the QA. Hey, can we just say how useless QA is? Oh yeah, yeah they're terrible. Yeah. They're Jesus terrible. Christ, they're worse than stormtroopers, man. Well, that's well, that's what happens when you put a bunch of people in charge of something. <laughs> Because those are all legitimate humans, apparently. So that's why they're completely ineffective. <laughs> if they had just been hosts, it would have been fine. It would have been fine. <laughs> well, um, I guess you could ask Stubbs. <laughs> yeah. Or can you? <laughs> I wonder how many times in meetings they would hand Stubbs like paperwork and he would be like, this doesn't look like anything to me. <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> that must have been pretty hard to work around. <laughs> He goes home like they just keep handing me blank pages. I don't fucking. <laughs> they keep asking me what my opinion are on these numbers, and the bl- pages are blank. Oh my! And then I realize that I black out for the hours at a time. <laughs> I I agree with what Robert's saying about how they 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 try stuff, they put it out there, and they wait for a reaction, because I feel like that's the whole post credits thing. Yeah, let's just uh, let's yeah. just do that. Let's just get that over with. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so we get William and Dolores, the man in black, William, I should say, not Jimmy Simpson, who was not in the finale for some damn reason. He turns on her the way she assumed that he would. He pulls the trigger on the flat bullet, or he shoots her two or three times, yeah. and she just eats gunshots because you know she's actually the T one thousand. Right, um, well, and she did yeah. it earlier in the season, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, and then he pulls the trigger on the shotgun part of the gun and uh, blows his hand off, and he falls to the ground and winces in pain, and then they go about the rest of the episode doing whatever they're going to do, and we don't get an answer on William. We we do see him get up and go into the elevator. Yeah, right. and he's... 
at the same time that Bernard is walking towards the elevator to go up. Right. And you think that we're going to get this meeting, and then we just don't. And then we don't. Mm. Yeah. And then they don't touch on it until the very end when we see the man in black is laying on the stretcher. They found him. He's in really bad shape. And you're, you realize that the man in black survived. But then the credits yeah. roll. And then halfway through the credits, we get a, a bonus scene. Which, which they did at the end uh, of the season one. Yeah. Too. yeah. Interesting thing about the post credit scene. It was originally in uh, the middle of the near the middle of the episode, apparently. Ah, huh? I'm, re- I'm reading the the post credit scene involved. Uh, uh, production found that having the scene in the middle of the episode was too confusing to viewers. No shit. There, there are such exhausting mental exercises that you had to go through to get to it. The you don't say the post credit slot. Yeah. <laughs> I I literally would have shut my fucking television off. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's why they didn't do that. <laughs> oh my Especially God. tossing that right into the fucking middle of the episode. Yeah. How, how absolutely disorienting for the sake of disorientation. <laughs> but even even having it at the end. Oh, no, just... yeah. trust me. We were all yes. pretty confused until, was... they, until we had to read interviews after the fact of them explaining what that was. Yes. I was angry. Yeah, so, will you, so we get <laughs> the man in black. He's yeah, in the right. elevator. He's coming down the elevator. The elevator doors open. He stumbles into the hallway of what was the forge. It's just completely not what it just was. It's it's destroyed. It's yeah. destroyed. It's filled with light yeah. and uh, dust. There's, there's dust dirt. And dirt. And William right. and and <laughs> Emily, the character that looks like Emily, who is the actress whose name I can't think of at the moment, uh, she comes out. Something and, Nordic. And she says something. Mm. What does she say to him? Uh, I don't think he's. I don't think she says anything. I think he sees her and he goes, I fucking knew it. Yeah. No, yeah. He's, he's like, oh, fuck. And then he says, am I in a thing? <laughs> yeah, that's he, that was he his knows fucking, That's my already. favorite quote. Am I in a thing? Dude, Ed Harris is the fucking best. I was like, I was like dude, is he in a thing? <laughs> <laughs> so he um, comes I, down the steps. Her first lines him. might have just been, Hot, hello, William, or something like that. Right. Yeah. So he, le- he goes down the steps. She leads him into a very familiar cyclical room. Um, and they she have a conversation. Him, she asks him how long that he's been there. And he says he doesn't know. Like, he's, like, trying to process all of this. Well, he's in the beginning of episode nine, didn't he say he had a... He says something like, I have a hard time remembering a time not being here or something right. something like that. Yeah. So, yep. But the, like the, in this party. in this moment he's he's murmuring to himself. He's like I don't I can't remember. He's like I'm in the park. He's like I'm in my fucking park. And then he's like what are you what are you test like testing for or whatever and she says fidelity of course. Bum, bum, bum. Bum. And at that point I was sitting on the edge of my couch with my hands on my temples with my jaw on the floor like what? <laughs> Just uncontrollably crying. Uh, you would not have liked to have seen me where I was at that point. No, I was just sitting in my chair. But um <laughs> Yeah. I audibly chair, I, I audibly yelled at my television. I was like what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah. Because it's such a de- it's such a deep <laughs> deep dive into we, the deep end. Because <laughs> we know because we know what when they say fidelity, we know what that means. We talked about it in the last episode because it was literally the center of episode four. Right. So right yeah. now, as soon as she, I mean, obviously when he walks into that room, we know what's going on. But until she says the word fidelity, then we know for sure that the version of William we're looking at in this scene is a host. So it leads me to believe with what they said, with what we learned inside the forge is that Williams, some, some version, some host version of William that they're trying to create for some reason uh, to make him live forever in that body. Some, for some reason um, when he could just be Jimmy Simpson, but whatever. Um, (laughs) <laughs> I don't know if he chose that. that oh, God damn it. If that was in his will, he, he got shafted. Um, uh, Jesus Christ. Make it young me, why wouldn't you? Um, 
I like being 60 and my bones I, scraping together when I walk. Uh, okay, honestly, I'm sure that the answer within the uh, within within the canon of the story is that it, it the, the body has to match the the life's right. progression. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Um, so <laughs> because we saw Jim Delos having to live out the worst day of his life or his defining moment or what, however you want to word that. Um, Obviously, it seems obvious that William has to relive killing his daughter, right? Which we saw in episode nine, yep. and and yep. has to live through that again, over yep. and over and over again, until they get him right, right? Which Jesus Christ, yeah, that's horrible. But also, yes. Jim Delos has to live with the fact that he pushed his son away and he died six months later or whatever it was, yeah. right? I was not I was not angry like you guys were and you're totally and I'm not trying to detract from that you you are absolutely absolutely justified in your anger. Um I was not angry. I was I was like, "Oh, well what the fuck?" but um absolutely just as confused, definitely. I thought that what they were trying to say was that William was a host the whole time. Yeah. And that would have pissed me off. So For what sure. we, yeah. what we did learn was that he was not a host the whole time. It's just from when we pick that part up till then, he is a host because it's the future. So uh, what I thought they were doing was trying to say that he was a host the whole time and I would have been absolutely furious. But I, they, they, in explaining it again, after listening to interviews that Lisa Joy did, he's, he wasn't a host the entire episode. He was just a host in that, in that scene. Right. So that made it, I was like, fair enough, but you shouldn't have to explain that in an interview oh, I, after the episode. Look, they, uh, it, it, what it came off to me as looking at it in, in hindsight, they went for shock factor. Yeah. They, ab they absolutely went f to, to get the reaction that they got. They wanted you to go, what the fuck? Yeah. And then, and then to then come to terms with it later. Um, well, it was one of the big one of the big theories this season on the internet was that William was a host, right? So I, I for whatever reason thought that that was happening in real time, and I was so confused. Yeah. Um, but then learning that it's the future makes it okay and understandable. It's just like, why would you put that in here? Because I don't think that I think that they ended his story his arc for the season in a decent enough way where he just blows his hand off and then we don't see him again. Yeah. Well, we see him in the, on the right. beach he, at the he, end, but, right. but so, that, like that would have been, that would have been well enough for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then I, I throw this in here and that opens, that blows a door open now that we're waiting to hear about, you know, yeah. and I just, I don't know why you would do that when you could have just shut the door. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's I think, fair. I think what they should have done was they could have opened season three with that scene. Yeah. I think that would have started things off with, okay, well, what's happening here? How many questions do they have? And then I they could have paid it off throughout that season, like explained, okay, this takes place in the future. Right. To be fair, they probably could have, they probably could have started season two with that. Yeah. And then, yeah. and then just never go back to that moment until he goes down the elevator. And then you'd be like, right. wait a minute. Yeah. I think that would have been much better. But again, I think it was calculated. They, they did it for, they did it for shock factor. I can't say again, I don't know that, but um, I'm just glad they came out and talked about it afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I think the, yeah. the blowback wasn't what they wanted. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. And they were like, Oh shit, we got to get out ahead of this. We're sorry. <laughs> We're sorry for confusing and angry, angering all of you. <laughs> look, but I don't I mean, think they're that sorry. <laughs> no, they're, no, no they're, look, they're still making money, and they 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 know there's asses going to be in seats whenever season three premieres. Um, you know, I, I, it's 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 different, but I would say it's similar enough. It's like I said in the group chat to when I watched uh, and Jordan, you watched Lost when it as it was coming. out. I did, yes, yeah. Th there there were season enders to to Lost that were kind of like that, where there would be huge time skips or um, you know uh, skips to people being off the island when you thought they were on the island still or something. You know, so you know it's not like this production team because this is an executive produced by J.J. Abrams, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Not like this kind of stuff has never happened, but um, I think this was the most. Uh, Shocking, I guess. I don't know. It, it was, was a leap. It was a leap. The most, uh, the most jarring. That's the yes. one. It was the most yeah. jarring. 
Yeah. So, like, after season one, uh, I would I would tell people to watch this show. What, by the way, what was the mid? I, I don't remember what was the post or mid credit scene for season one. Uh, it was uh, Armistice uh, getting her hand stuck in the door, and then she like ripped it. Oh, out. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. And then okay. we saw, and then we saw the like samurai, right? And then it cut. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so after season one, I would recommend the show to people because I was like, oh my god, you have to watch this. It's awesome. Um, I don't know after season two <laughs> that I could recommend. Like, I would have to, you'd have to go on like a 10 minute explanation to somebody. Like, listen, it's really good, but okay. <laughs> so, like, well, you, you just you hook them with the violence and the boobs, and then they're in. Right. Like us now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like I want to, so I was telling someone I want to see a linear version of season two. Oh, like I want to. How I good would it be if they just did if they just did a full blown cut of both seasons in order? That's what I want to see. I would love that because it would make you so much it. more sense. And all right, give me the footage. <laughs> Hasn't been done yet. We could do it. I'll do it. <laughs> give me somewhere to post it where I'm not going to get a copyright strike. And I'll done. do it. I'll make it happen. YouTube. Easily. YouTube. It hasn't been done yet, Brian. Copyright strike on YouTube. Give me 45 hours to cut it all together. Yeah. Right. And I'll make it happen. I'll Imagine export. how confusing it would be just to the editor. Like, <laughs> wait, so wait, I cut, wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Look, um, you know, if the sum of the if the sum of a parts of a of a of a TV show is to keep you watching, they've done their job, you know. Have they uh, though, yeah. or have they turned off too many people because they're trying to outwit them? Uh, it, it, I can only speak for myself, <laughs> and I mean I, I'm pretty sure you guys are going to watch it season three. Oh, level, I but, am, but I'm but... speaking generally. Um, I know that a couple of people that I work with that watch it there, they they had many concerns just like we did about the finale. They're going to be watching season three. So I don't know. I think if whatever attrition occurred this season, I don't think there's going to be a big drop off. I think the drop off happened. I think, you know, that the people, the people who don't want to know, they, they're not going to watch and they already stopped watching. It's just like the normal drop off for any show. Fair. I feel like, you know. Fair. That's I, I true. I don't really think they. I don't think they've necessarily alienated people. Well, maybe some, but I feel like it's just the typical as the series goes on. No, I'm, I think most shows yeah. go the opposite direction. Most shows gain people, especially when they have like a year and a half off. The word, I think I that feel like the year the year and a half off was detrimental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But I don't. But I people usually, don't wait. Usually shows. There's a million other TV shows they could watch. Yeah, usually shows pick people up as it goes on. Which is why I, I, I was so surprised that the drop off in season two's finale was so big. I don't. I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd have to see numbers to know that. Um, I know. I know for a for a fact. I don't have the specific numbers, but a show it, just as an example, a, uh, Sons of Anarchy picked people up as it went along. Where season seven, their final season, was their biggest rating season ever. Okay. Every episode was more than the last, and then the finale had way more than they had ever done before. Okay. But that was a series finale, obviously, so you know maybe that had to do with it, where it was like the final season that everybody got into it. But yeah. Yeah. it picked people up as it went along, but it was also consistently every fall you knew you had 13 episodes or whatever it was for a season. I... Uh... So I don't know. I mean, like, you know, I look at network shows and I know that, you know, there are shows that stay on the air that lose, like, you know, look at Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. They lose, they lose uh, uh, viewers, you know? Yeah. Uh, and and, yeah. I, and again, I know it's not TV, it's HBO, but still. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so it, 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 it might work a little differently. I don't know. Um, I, think it, I think it absolutely works differently for HBO because it's HBO. Yeah. Because you can't get, network has, what do they get? 32 episodes a season and it's like split with the winter break 20, or whatever. 23. 23. So that's like a lot to have to get through. So a lot of people just dump out because it's week after week of, you know, shenanigans or whatever you want to do. Um, but with HBO. Yeah. Like a, ser- like a serial show like this where you get 10 episodes a season or 13 episodes a season. And you don't have to worry about commercial breaks. Right. Or it's, anything like that. It's, you know, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. So I just, I don't know that the, 
you know, because I, I get a show, another show, but it's a it's a half hour comedy, so it's not the same. But Silicon Valley's picked up viewers as it's gone along. Yeah, I'm just so I'm concerned about what's going to happen to Westworld once Game of Thrones is over. That that is what HBO is concerned about. Yeah, <laughs> uh, because Westworld commands a massive budget, and they don't get the return on the viewership. Um, I don't. I don't think that's going to be that big an issue. I, again, I you know I, I can't cite the exact source where I read it, but they they said like they've got it mapped out for just about four seasons. Right. I think it's going to end if it gets to four seasons. It's going to end after four. Yeah, yeah. A- HBO is focusing on how to keep Game of Thrones returning on an investment with its five spinoffs. That's what HBO. Yeah. Did. So yeah. <clears throat> it's it's difficult, but they're they're just concerned about their programming that's not. Game of Thrones, yeah, because they don't right. want to be home box thrones. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like you want Game of Thrones? You just go to HBO because that's all you're gonna get. Like, they don't want to become that. Game but of it's Bo- obviously the biggest driving force for them right now, so they've got to capitalize while it's hot. You know, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Game much of Box Thrones way, Office, yeah, much in much in the <laughs> same way that like AMC is trying to figure out what to do because After Walking Dead, Walking Dead yeah. is dying, a miserable, no, painful it's, existence. It's dead. It is dead. It's, yeah. it's dead, Jim. I, I, I dropped off that. <laughs> I know. Train. Me too. Um, I dropped off at the same point. I dropped off in the comics too. In, no. <laughs> but in, like in our in our previous iteration of our our podcast, I had said. I don't think that that's going to happen to me. And then I only watched two more episodes and I never watched another one. So fully, fully willing to admit that I didn't see that happening to myself, but I just couldn't give a shit anymore. Yeah. For that Which show. sucks because it was such an amazing show in the beginning. It was. No, yeah. absolutely. The, anyway, um, sorry, Westworld. But yeah. I, I thought Westworld had the potential to be the, the driving network show for them. You know, like everyone goes to HBO for Game of Thrones, but they also stay for Silicon Valley. They stay for Ballers. They, you know, they have a bunch of other shows. I thought Westworld would be the show to hook people, like new viewers in. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it is. I don't know if it's able to do that. Season one was. Yes. But I don't know if, if new seasons, if someone could just jump in. Well, it's going to depend upon, I believe, you know, whatever, whenever it's getting ready to come out, whatever that first trailer is. Yeah. Um, that that teaser that they showed at last year's Comic Con was fucking amazing. Yeah. So um, I don't know if that got them, you know, any more viewers or not, but um, I, you know, it would take a trailer. I'm sure showing, you know, stuff that maybe we don't want to see necessarily, like the show taking place out off the outside of the parks, but. Ugh. Um, yeah, that that seems oh, that seems like a certainty. You. It seems let's, like a certainty. Let's yeah, <laughs> That's let's Jurassic Park: The Lost World syndrome. <laughs> let's uh, let's talk about that because we, and the Fallen we somehow, Kingdom. We somehow missed that about how Tessa Thompson's Dolores escaped the park. Yeah, um, Haloris with uh, with five pearls. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. knew she had she had Bernards. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. And then whatever is inside Hale. Right. Which would be Dolores's. The uh the Nolans had said they referred to it as a creature. Right. The one that's in Hale right now is referred to as the creature. Yeah. So Dolores oh, had cool. uh like her new body printed. She put this creature in <laughs> Hale's body. Right. One of them was Bernard, <laughs> so that leaves three right. unaccounted for. Right. We don't, we don't know, know who, who they else, are. We don't know who else she has. It's not her. Stubbs, it's not her father. Ford and. But Stubbs is Stubbs, still at the Ford park. And, Stubbs exists on Harris. the park. <laughs> and Ford didn't have a pearl printed. Yeah. I'm I'm being facetious. Sorry. Really? But I'm just. You I'm just saying say. like. Well, yeah. no, Ford. Ford did have one because that's the one that Bernard had, right? But we don't know yeah. if it exists anymore because the cradle exploded. It'll certainly be interesting to see w- who those other pearls are, and I think yeah. that's kind of the arc going forward. Uh, um, yeah, it certainly seems they've set up a uh, that 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 Dolores is going to be a terrorist of sorts. <laughs> um, 
and that and that Bernard is gonna be not that. <laughs> Maybe yeah. working with the authorities. I, I guess he, they kind of made it seem like they came to some sort of agreement where she was like, well, I need the guy trying to stop me. And he was like, but why? It's just, okay. So I heard, I heard it's, it's kind of like Mr. Glass. Okay. At the end of Unbreakable, how he's like, I need my hero. I didn't know who I was until I had you and knew who you were. So it's like, I need a, I need an antagonist to my protagonist. Right in order to go on any any final thoughts on season two of westworld before we wrap up so i guess well, well, oh how everyone's like favorite scene maybe throughout the season favorite episode i think my favorite episode had to be episode four i think i would say my favorite episode from the season wound up being episode eight kiksuya uh, kiksuya yeah um actually me too probably just because of how emotionally driven that was and how tight of a story that was. Um, that stands really, on its own. It does. Too. It really does. It's a, it, if you're talking about like episodes that have to deal with specifically what's going on in the main arc of the show, I, I would say for uh, Riddle of the Sphinx as well. I, I would have to, I'm, I'm probably going to go with Kick Suya. Just because even though it was a uh, kind of like a side ish story. It was just, it was the mo- it was the most to me emotionally overwhelming episode, and it made me feel the most. Yeah, it was a lot of feels. Yeah, and and there was cool violence and fighting also, mm-hmm. and a good twist. It was everything you wanted in a Westworld episode, <laughs> and it was an order. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was refreshing. <laughs> it's proof that they can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Brian, episode four. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Th- th- that that fucking episode was. Uh, that might be the best episode of the the series. I don't know. I but, agree. Uh, I agree. I um, think it's rated as the best episode of the series, actually. Yeah. And if and but, to, um, to circle back to something that we had discussed, oh, the oh, oh, because that episode's got circles. Yeah, um, <laughs> we, we were we were saying that um, uh, that this that season two had the best individual episodes. Right, um, but I think it's fair to say that season one was more oh, more consistent. Absolutely. Like absolutely. It, they each episode yeah. delivered exactly what it needed to deliver, and there weren't as many ups and downs throughout the season uh, right. as this one was. Where there were some episodes that were out of this world, and then there were some that were absolutely just like, "Why?" You know. Yeah. So it, you know, I'd say season one is still more consistent across the board. Regardless, I'm I'm excited <laughs> for season three, and I yeah, hope yeah. I hope we don't get as long of a of a break. Yeah, yeah really. We have more stuff in the future coming up. We're all going to talk multiple things. Oh. I I believe our next episode is going to focus on Ant Man and the Wasp. Yes. yes, super excited about that. Uh, I was telling Rob, it's a nice little palate cleanser. Yeah, yeah. We're, we've washed our hands level. clean of Westworld for this for this season. Uh, which is nice that we can move on to other things. Thank you, everyone, for listening. I'm Jordan. I'm Robert. I'm Andrew. Parting is such sweet sorrow. I'm Brian. This little cowpoke's going to mosey on out of here. <laughs> I like the word mosey. I think it's, <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> Episode four is in the books. How do you guys feel about Westworld Season 2? Do you feel like I did, thinking it went a bit off the rails? Or are you okay with how things turned out and strapped in for Season 3? Did you enjoy all the twists and turns, or did you get lost by Episode 6, like me? Let us know! We want to hear your reaction to the finale, as well as the season as a whole. You can drop by on Facebook, at PopCannonPod. Follow us on Twitter, at PopCannonPod. On YouTube, you can simply search PopCannonPod and find all of our new episodes and our episode backlog from our previous iteration. We are also available on Apple Podcasts, Anchor, Google Play, Overcast, and Pocket Casts. If we're not on a platform you use, let us know and we will get there for you. Don't forget, there's a K, Pop Cannon Pod. And if by some strange cosmic circumstance you feel the need to follow us individually, you can find me, Robert, on Instagram and Twitter at Yesbol. 
Jordan is on Instagram and Twitter at Alex Shepard. Andrew is on Instagram at skeleton underscore city underscore comics and Twitter at flavored underscore red. And last we saw Brian, he was sprinting toward a cliff. His body went limp and fell over the edge. It was later found waterlogged in a flooded desert landscape next to a Bengal tiger and a man named Teddy. It was weird, though. We sliced his skull open and discovered there was no data, as if someone sent his consciousness to a beautiful valley beyond. Thanks for listening. Check back soon for episode 5, where we review Ant-Man and the Wasp.